A patient was diagnosed with a tumor located at the jugular foramen as confirmed by a CT scan. Which of the following would be the most likely neurologic deficit? Is it loss of hearing, inability to close and pucker the lips, loss of gag reflex, inability to abduct the eye, or loss of skin sensation from the face? First, we need to define the gag reflex and specify its afferent and efferent components. In the gag reflex, when gently touching the posterior wall of the pharynx with a soft cotton swab or tongue depressor, contraction of pharyngeal muscles results. This implies sensory stimulation of the pharyngeal mucosa and it is the glossopharyngeal nerve that provides the sensory input, whereas the vagus provides the motor output, that's to say contraction of the pharyngeal muscles. Now here to be specific, the motor supply is through the vagus and its component of the cranial root of the accessory nerve. These supply all the muscles of the pharynx except stylopharyngeus which is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, the only muscle that is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. However, we don't need to go into much of these details. It's easier to remember in relation to the gag reflex that the in is 9 and the out is 10. In 9, out 10. Second, we need to know the structures that pass through the jugular foramen. This foramen is the root of exit from the cranial cavity of three cranial nerves and these are the glossopharyngeal, vagus and accessory nerves. 9, 10 and 11th cranial nerves. Here you can see the spinal root of the accessory nerve ascending from the foramen magnum reaching the jugular foramen to join the cranial root and soon the cranial root will be given to the vagus nerve and the, it's the only the spinal accessory that continues by itself to exit from the jugular foramen. In addition to these three nerves, the internal jugular vein exits as the continuation of the sigmoid venous sinus inside the skull. Since both the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve exit through this foramen, then nerve compression at this foramen will lead to loss of both components of the reflex arc, the input by the glossopharyngeal and the output by the vagus nerve. So option C, loss of gag reflex is correct. The other options, loss of hearing, would be affected when the vestibulocochlear nerve is involved. This nerve passes through the internal acoustic meatus together with the facial nerve. Option B is also false because lip movement here is a function of the facial nerve which supplies the muscles of facial expression. The facial nerve, as has been mentioned, passes through the internal acoustic meatus and would not be affected by this tumor at the jugular foramen. In addition, the facial nerve leaves the skull through the stylomastoid foramen, which is located between the styloid process and the mastoid process in its way to reach the face. The other option, inability to abduct the eye, this is a function of the lateral rectus muscle, which is supplied by the abducent nerve. The abducent nerve leaves the junction of the pons and medulla oblongata, passes forwards through the cavernous sinus and reaches the uh, orbit through the superior orbital fissure, a route that is away from the jugular foramen. The other option, loss of skin sensation from the face, is also wrong because skin sensation from the face is provided by the three branches of the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve and its uh, three components are present in the middle cranial fossa, away from the jugular foramen, which is present in the posterior cranial fossa. The ophthalmic division V1 leaves the skull through the superior orbital fissure. Maxillary division V2 
leaves the skull through foramen rotundum, and the mandibular division V3 leaves the skull through foramen ovale. So this leaves us with the correct choice loss of gag reflex results when a tumor compresses the nerve components at the jugular foramen.